Well, welcome back to Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt. This is our Boston Marathon edition. We are presented and hosted by Highland, Stop Your Cramp, Not Your Race, and by Polar, Chase Your Destiny. Our guests from Highland's Teachers Program, Kevin Dua right here, and Adam, welcome on the end. How are you guys doing? Fired up. Um, just, yeah, we are... We're, we're ready for tomorrow. I, yeah. I bet you are. <laughs> so, Adam, talk a, a little bit about your running year last year was huge. Yeah, last year I decided that it was time for me to find what I really had inside of myself. Yeah. I had done seven marathons previously, and I was looking for a new challenge. So I decided to run one marathon a month in the year of 2017. And then actually my December race, I ran backwards in the middle of the night turned around and then ran the race back. Wait, wait, ran backwards like? I ran the course backwards. I didn't run backwards. Uh, <laughs> point I've, to point course. I've covered some of those backwards. <laughs> I've heard of those guys. <laughs> and juggling guys. Yeah, no. Oh <laughs> ran it God. backwards, then ran the race, and then uh, capped off the year with a 24-hour race in California at Chrissy Field. Oh, yeah? My goal was 100 miles, and I ran 103, so. What, I mean, what was the, uh, you just wanted to test yourself a little bit? You'd run seven marathons, you feel maybe a little stale, I need a, I need a little jump start? I didn't need to do this for my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. I felt that I already have discipline, I know what I have inside of me. Right. But I really, really wanted to know what I had inside. And I really feel that we are so dang comfortable mm -hmm. in our society in 2018. If it's hot, we turn on the air conditioning. If we're hungry, we get food. And I really, really wanted to push myself mm -hmm. every single month. There was uh, some months where I only had a week uh, in a week in between races, and I did a night marathon. I did New York. I did rock and roll. I traveled for these, and uh, I really kind of everything yeah. that was important came to the surface. So you wanted to suffer a little bit, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. So I'm ready for tomorrow. Bring on the rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what's interesting about that? One of my good buddies, Joe DeSanta, who started Spartan Race, and his whole thing is that our Americans are way too soft because we have way too many creature comforts mm. and we don't put ourselves out there mm. right hundred percent and you agree without now is 100%. that something that is was sort of new to you or was this something you've always lived I've always kind of had that discipline and that yeah. ability to suffer in my life but I'm 38 I'm married I have two kids full-time job I travel for work sometimes I, I just I really wanted to see what else was deep down in there and um, it, it didn't even have to do with running it was just other parts of my life yeah you really have to funnel what's really important to your life and I, I don't watch TV turn off the Netflix get out the door and go <laughs> run and do something and uh, you really have to do that when you want to have a big goal like that and it actually wasn't that hard people ask me what was the hardest part it, it wasn't that hard <laughs> The hardest part is the traveling and getting yeah. getting to the races on yeah. time when you're trying to. You, you do tell it. yourself you're going to do it, Bob. Yes. And you, and you're going to do it. Yeah. I mean that's it. Talk a little about kids deserve it. So kids deserve it is a organ. It's actually an, an, kind of an ecosystem that uh, my friend in Texas and I started. Todd Nestaloni. We started just with social media, yeah. blogging, Instagram, Twitter, and then we actually wrote a book. And uh, we've sold books all over the world. We both travel and speak a bunch in addition to our our, our day jobs. Where uh, stop making excuses push the boundaries because our kids deserve it everything at the end of the day needs to go back to kids so why do you do that because kids deserve it people ask me what do kids deserve everything so when you say kids deserve it they deserve someone to be a role model for role model they someone do? to be excited for them they, they, they deserve okay. technology in their hands they deserve politicians to make decisions that are best for them not what's best for the politicians hands down kids deserve it everything and what's best for them not best for the adults Okay, so Kevin, yes, sir. talk about your program. Where are you based? So I'm actually based here in Massachusetts. Um, I teach history and psychology at Cambridge Range and Latin, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, I am proud. I'm proud to say that I am actually the 2017 Massachusetts History Teacher of the Year. Um, As well, you should be. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, and yeah, I've been living here for about nine years. I am happily married. Um, I love what I do every single day. Um, going off what Adam was saying, um, kids do deserve everything. So for me, I go in every single day with the mindset that I want to bring in energy. I want to provide them with a platform to speak their truth, um, to enjoy their passion, to support each other, to empathize, um, and then apply what they've learned, whether it's history or psychology, and apply it into their community to better it. Because at the end of the day, 
kids do deserve as much support and investment as possible. And it shouldn't be focused on making sure that they are ready five or 10 years from now. It should be making sure that they are ready and passionate now. And so for me as an educator, um, also being part of this amazing team that we yes. are um, based off Highlands, um, being able to being able to connect with individuals who uh -huh. have that same mindset, um, whether they are teaching in the classroom, um, they are traveling, um, connecting with individuals through books, um, through speaking engagements. I guess it all centers around that we we try our best to make sure that we give everything to our youth. So. For you, when you're talking history, yes, history can be dry. Yes, history can be dry. Yes, <laughs> and, it, and it takes the right personality to bring history to life, to make it fun. I'm guessing you're that fun guy when you're teaching. I mean, you're di you're a dynamic guy. What do you do to? I'm coming to your class. Okay. What are you doing to make history come to life for me? Well, I try. Well, first you're probably gonna pop quiz. Uh, <laughs> Well, so I'll be out the back door. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I try my best to make sure that for students, yes. um, I emphasize how relevant everything is to them. So I may be bringing up a subject um, about an event or an individual that um, occurred or was alive during the 1800s or the right. 1900s. And then, uh, because this generation is... Um, extremely tied to social media yes. um, and so forth. I try to bring in the world into the classroom. So whether it's bringing in um, news information from Fox News or CNN, um, a primary source, whether it's through a book or online, I try to bring different perspectives into the classroom mm -hmm. and have the students critically analyze so that they may not all agree, That's but okay. they are able to apply a lens where they understand that history is ongoing. And it makes it not even more fun, but it also makes it so that there's just common, um, common link where uh -huh. they can all try to learn from each other. And I guess that's how I try to make history as exciting and relevant when they are the ones who are exploring and trying to um, learn history on their own term, through their own means. Yes. So, Adam, you're not in the classroom now, right? No, I'm not. And, and But the transition from the classroom to being more of a, a super in a supervisory role, was that hard for you? So people ask me that, do you miss the kids? And when I went from being a teacher to a principal, I didn't miss the kids because I was still in classrooms every day. Yes, yeah. And now going from a principal to a director role, we have 50 schools in my district, 35,000 students. I spend you got two plenty of kids. I spend two <laughs> hours a week in my office. I mean, yeah. my office is the classroom, so I still teach on a weekly basis. So I still consider myself a teacher nice. um, every day, and I still connect. And it wasn't hard because I feel now you have a bigger reach of bigger people platform. that you can 100 percent bigger platform of people that you can reach and connect with. And um, I, I really believe in the, just the connecting of people. And yes, connecting all over the country, all over the world, but you know. The school districts where we work, there are going to be teachers in the same building that aren't even connected. So when you're going around and you see, oh, hey, he's doing that over there, or yep. she's doing that down the street, and then you can connect people, to me, that is where the magic yes, is. Absolutely. Because then the work gets stronger, the, yeah. relation, the relationships get deeper, um, and just, I, I like to think of myself as a connector of yes. sorts. So you're dealing with, you're not just inspiring the kids. You're, you want to get these teachers all on the same page going, we're doing great stuff here. Because mm -hmm. it could get... Teaching is one of those professions where the pay is not great, right? The benefits are not great. The benefits are internal. The benefits are when you see your kids succeeding. Yes. So for you, how much of your time is spent really, because you got to rally, the, everything comes down to how great your teachers are. If your teachers are great, your kids are mm -hmm. all going to benefit. So you've got to be that sort of cheerleader to get the mm. teachers to understand <laughs> these people are all your friends, yep. I'm your friend, the kids will benefit if we all work together. Yes. Most of it is the adults, and it's easy to teach kids, I think, I especially agree. elementary, 100%. but yeah. but bringing the adults along, and that's what it just goes back to, kids deserve it. It's not about you. We've oh, already no. had our chance. Mm. It's their turn now, and what you did 20 years ago, what you did five years ago, is not relevant anymore. You can teach for 20 years, just don't teach the same year 20 times. <laughs> Every single year, we need to innovate and change for the next year, because I have a seven and a five-year-old at home, and they teach me things, Absolutely. and we Every need day. to even more so tap 
tap into our kids because they know more and different things than we do and how to hack the systems that we have. Encyclope encyclopedias, I mean, they're gone. Um, the, that whole notion of education where we're the purveyor of all the knowledge, the smartest person in the room is the room. And once you can harness all those things together, you're going to actually have more teachers on your side. Kids are going to be working harder for you, more involved, stronger relationships, and you're going to go a lot farther, a lot faster. You know what I found fascinating? My background as a PE teacher. Okay, and nice. My, the art teacher from my school, we, we started the competitor group and we mm -hmm. bought all the rock and roll marathons. I found that what I learned from teaching, which was working with teachers, working with parents, working with kids, all the integration goes with it, made us successful in business. Yes. Because you have to work together, yes. right. right? And I'm guessing you're finding the same thing. 100%. Because you could be standing in a little silo going, I'm teaching history, but oh, who cares about that? But you're teaching more than history, you're teaching life skills yes. across the board. Yes, and I think going based off Going based off what Adam said in terms of us as adults, um, it says a lot when we're all on the same page. Yes. Uh, because for that five-year-old, that seven-year-old, that high schooler, they are looking at us as role models. Yes, they and are. so if we are disagreeing in a way where there's not a compromise, where there's not empathy, where there's not trying to compromise and support, then for that young person, they are going to apply that um, towards um, you know, a stranger in that negative way. And so for us, it's very, there's so much value in being able to connect. There's so much value in being able to come together and to plan in the way that benefits our youth for the long run. So you're, you're right, like at the end of the day, um, as adults, the responsibility is on us to inspire these students and you now I've been saying this for years I think as educators we truly do have the best seat in the house because we do see these students coming from different backgrounds we do interact with colleagues um, who are going going um, day in and day day out um, trying to better the system trying to better the community and it really does start with that mindset of trying to come together and as educators we we're pretty polished yes. in how to do that well. So Adam, how do you, you've had this whole group of 17 teachers, mm. right? Never, didn't meet until yesterday. <laughs> Have you learned from each other as teachers, educators, runners throughout this process? So I feel the whole social media component, 20 years ago it would have been a different conversation, yep. yeah. but today the whole social media with Facebook and Instagram and we've already connected so much together, but since the first time that we met yesterday, I mean just sitting down and having conversations and it just like you, yeah. you click, like these are our people right. and you know what to talk about and with that social media component, we already know little things about each other people. So there's those little, those, those, those nuggets in your head. I want to ask Kevin a question. I want to ask Jackie a question about something that I saw. So we're constantly learning from each other. So we're stronger for the kids. And that's, that's what it is. So I feel, again, like tomorrow, you know, we're running a marathon. And it's yes, it's my legs and my training that are going to get me across the finish line. But I really feel it's that ecosystem of runners. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife has run this race. And she's back in California with my kids. And, you know, they're sending love. It's that ecosystem of running, of educators that really helps you in your training, helps you on the day of the race, even if it's going to be raining and cold tomorrow, it doesn't matter. Um, and those people bring you along. And when you want to quit or you're tired or you want to stop, you think about all those people that are in your corner, if they're with you on the course or if they're somewhere else. And it, it really does help out. I mean, going back to all the races I ran last year, there were some low low points. I was gonna ask and that's what points. I wanted. I wanted those low points. I wanted to see how bad it was, but it was those people in my training and it all combined, again, the ecosystem for me that helps me get through and also it's it's why I do what I do so so the common denominator besides being teachers you're all runners yes right yes so uh, what is it about running that's good for kids because it used to be running was a punishment <laughs> okay you messed up take a lap right running was always looked at as a punishment rather than kids love to run mm. and it's sort of been taken away from them and made it into a punishment how has that uh, how do you use running with your kids I would say the idea of putting everything in perspective, uh -huh. um, as simple as that may be. Um, I think in the classroom with our students, um, we can simply say, if you, if you prepare yourself, if you study, if you train, um, you are going to get the results that you put in. Mm -hmm. And that simple mindset 
um, can go as far as um, helping an individual in many ways um, overcome mm -hmm. so many obstacles in their way. And I think for young people, it's this idea that, hey, I get to you know, run around. Like if I'm able to run around in my neighborhood, at school, or even within my house down the hallway, it's just something that's, that seems innocent. And as we get older, there's so many different factors that may get in the way of us um, having that childlike instinct. And so I think as educators, what we try to do is, we try to put that in perspective for our kids, mm -hmm. um, where there's a goal that you want to accomplish. If you can try to do X, Y, and Z, then you can essentially reach that goal. And when Adam was talking about how we were all able to connect through social media, um, you know, social media um, in many ways gets a negative um, vibe. Um, schools get a negative um, vibe to it. And I think as educators, we are great in putting that perspective where social media can be looked upon as a way to connect with individuals. Right. That schools can be a place where future leaders, are, are better people are, sure. are growing in. And so again, that simple mindset, um, being able to apply that, not just for a student trying to do well on a quiz, but also that that child that wants to you know, run a lap, I'm doing PE classes. Right. All of that helps in trying to accomplish something small or something big. How has running helped you, uh, uh, Kevin, as a um, as as a educator? I would just say that it's the simplicity of it. Yeah. It's just the simplicity of it. it doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how big or small you are. What color? What you know? What's doesn't the color matter. of your skin? Mm -hmm. You can go out and run. And uh, not everybody can go ski. Yeah. Not everybody can go ride a bike. But um, in and, and to me, the correlation to education is keep it simple. Yes. Not we people. Mm -hmm politicians in some levels try to complicate the heck out of education. Yeah. It's TMI, too many initiatives, too many programs, too many ideas that they have that don't really work. Keep it simple, build relationships, do what's relevant, connect with kids, go run, and you're gonna see you're gonna see success. And do what's right. Do what's right. Yes. Um, have you, during that, I'm imagining during your 100 miler, that's where some of the low points mm. came in, right? We've seen it before where you, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm 50 miles, I'm only halfway <laughs> there. I, mean, I can't imagine, I've run 50 and now you have to be thinking about that. How did you, what did you learn from specifically from that event about yourself? Slowing down, having patience, playing the long game. A lot of people play the short game yeah. in life, in business, with relationships, and for a 24 hour, you, you have to go slow. You, you can't sprint. No. And there are so many correlations to that in class. Kevin's working on a project with students. It's not just done in one day. We're gonna go a whole month yes. with this project and go deep. Because in 10 years, Kids are going to remember that deep project, the deep dive, not the, the not process. the not the one inch yeah. dive. Yeah, yeah. So having to go that long on New Year's Eve, just the mindset, all the training, and really you got to be patient. And people aren't patient. You got to just slow down and, and really play the long game. Um, I think I knew that going in, and uh, every day I get older, I realize that even more. But after that experience, it really, really came to the surface to just invest, um, invest and be patient. How did Highland surprise you? With your <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my boss, who's actually my buddy, we were principals together in, a, in, a, in another district, text messaged me on a Friday, hey, I gotta talk to you this afternoon. I'm like, all right, and like he doesn't like we don't talk that way, <laughs> so it was just weird. I'm like, why are you being weird? So I was in my office, in his office. We were talking. His phone rang, like it was a FaceTime call. It wasn't like a phone call. He's talking to this person, and then he turns the phone to me, and the person goes, "Hey, did you run today?" I said, "Yeah, did you?" I just <laughs> threw it right back at him. He's like, "No, but you're running Boston Marathon." I was like, "What?" It was Ken, <laughs> Ken Chan, the person. I I'd never seen his face before because we only talked on the phone. I turned around. It was my secretary, all the secretaries, my superintendent. They all like They're punk, all, all behind. Yeah, so it was good. I've only been surprised three times in my life. That was one of the, one of the three times. So it was good. It was you? good. Um, it was actually um, in my. Um, kitchen. Um, <laughs> so my my wife 
calls me into the kitchen and she's holding up the phone yeah. and same thing like I've never met Ken before and so I'm having this conversation with um, this individual and I can hear him and I'm trying to process exactly what's going on and then he says you're running the Boston Maritime and I'm screaming um, my wife and I we have um, a dog named Finney and so He's seeing the excitement, he's barking, and <laughs> there's all this noise and everything. And then I'm like, wow, Ken must be like, wow, he must be really excited because his dog is really excited as well. And so for me, it was um, very intimate to, to be able to know that I get an opportunity to be on this team, um, to share it with not only my students, but, um, but my colleagues and also my family as well. And I would say, even though, again, we've all met each other for the first time 24 hours ago, um, it's, it, it has been a sense of like a second family. Sure. Um, being able to um, learn and grow and support with individuals who are doing amazing things um, in their own neck of the woods. We already knew each other. Yeah. yeah. We already knew yeah, each other. Just through yeah. social. Because, well, and also just because the education piece. Yeah. Yes. If we had just picked 15 people, just... It would have been a different. Oh, what do you do? What do you do? But like, but we already have. We already know. We yeah. already speak that language. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're, a, if you're a teacher, there's a bond. You know what? You know what's up. You know yep. what you're yes. there. Yes. Yes. Yep. You're not there because I am uh, starting a. Uh, <laughs> I'm starting an IPO, right? No, you're, no, you're <laughs> not, not there all. for that. No, no, no. no. Uh, now, you guys have both run Boston before. First time. This is my second time. I ran it um, back in 2012, uh, as people like to call it, the heat wave. Yes, it was hot. Yes. yes. Isn't that funny? You're probably going to have about a 50 degree difference <laughs> between the first one and this one. It's, it's, um, it's going to be one to remember. And again, I think as educators, and, um, just like as runners, we prepare for this. Of course. Um, and we also prepare for the unexpected as well. Exactly. So as long as we know that, yeah, we are confident in the base that we created within ourselves, then it could snow tomorrow. Um, but but we have that mindset that we are going to finish, that we are going to try to soak in the experience that um, there is nothing that's going to get in our way, just like everyone else who's running, to cross that finish line. Because again, we do truly deserve um, being able to see the end goal. And so I'm excited, whether it's my second time, um, like it, it all feels like I'm running Boston for the first time. Love that. Thanks, you guys, oh for taking Thank you, Bob. For having us. You guys are awesome. Thank I, you. I want to go to class right now. Hey, why not? <laughs> you guys, man. It's Sunday, tomorrow. I, I yeah, want to right? you guys, man. You guys Thank are you. the best. That's what I've loved about this whole Highlands program. If anybody questions where our educational system is, don't. It's amazing. Mm. Just go visit a school. Yes. Go visit yes. a classroom. Yes. Come on in. Don't make decisions from an office. Yes. Come on in. Yeah. We, we will give you, you a front a seat and a desk. I love it all. Again, Breakfast with Bob, Boston Marathon Edition, presented and hosted by Highlands, Stop Your Cramp, Not Your Race, and by Polar, Chase Your Destiny. Hold on, everybody. We will be right back.